Sapala kodia manata Ilai tenebra lo so parande bela kodia manata Ilemene so pela ros ke baladas kamala dos ke manatai Ile kote ni prele dos ke minara so palai Lemana kando ze prala dos ke minatalia Ile bere kendo so pala do le ke zo pala da itaili nenei Imene kurie kebela zote ila kodia Ye kalosa panata Marokosa palada sanda Can this place go up in flames as we pray in the Holy Ghost? Come on somebody rise on your feet Alabaratana Chains are falling off Chains are breaking off Chains are falling off Come on let this place go up in flames As we pray in the Holy Ghost Alamanatala na inanai Imenetai Jetani balakuria Imbreledos kemana Imenetose pelidai Imbrekuria mozai Imainetoli naisi Jekatona Yelimina sopali Jenakoli menazoi Jeni na itanevasoi Imina sopala dosa Imenetola Imbrelose Panalosia, Ibelosa, Yekoda Navalosa, Jenny Naitani, Limina do Tamana Tosa Pai, Yatani Banosa Pana, Yakota Nibala Dosa, Yakotai, Yatana Belosia, Imanatoli, Limanosa Palose, Imanatoni Talomosa, Ibrelosa, Imano Kamana Tai, Jenny. Yetonia, Imanasoi, Yekote, Yetonabai, Jenny Naita, Yerobo Saita, Ibaro, Yekaloza. Aleba Rosai, Yamina Zonaita, I see mountains rolling away, Imana Toli Abara, I see sicknesses rolling away. Imanatolia, I see diseases rolling away. Akanda Rabo Sana, I see doors opening everywhere. Doors opening everywhere. Ipene, 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 Jenny Naita, Imanatosia, Iberekedo, Imanatoi, Colossa. Aba baba ratana bayatani. Immanuel. Immanuel. Oh. Immanuel. Ima Emmanuel, Emmanuel, Alimina Zopala Zanaya, Emmanuel, Oh, Emmanuel. Charge from your ear has ceased just now. That discharge from your ear. Emmanuel. Kalama Rava Shana Barataya. Emmanuel. Oh. Emmanuel. For you shall not be swallowed up. Emmanuel. Oh, Maya, come on. Can you sing for me? Oh, oh yes. Emmanuel. Oh, yes. Emmanuel. Oh, yes. 
Shana Baya. forgotten you. Amanatasa. Imenetu Rabasa. Likano Samata. Don't be sorrowful anymore for I have come for you. Don't be afraid anymore because I am right with you. I will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. In heaven and on earth, who is like unto the great I am. For the shout of their king is in the midst of them. Ilato Samara Tasia. Fear not, for I have come. Oh, I have come. I have come. I have come. I have come. Barrenness is given way to fruitfulness. Lack is giving way to abundance. Failure is giving way to victory. Maratha Samataya. Lord, we give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Emmanuel, oh, Emmanuel, your name be praised. Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Oh, Emmanuel, your name be praised. Turn quickly with me to Job chapter 14. Job chapter 14. And we shall read from verse 7. If you are here on the power night of the anniversary, God's servant read from this scripture while he ministered, and it struck a chord in my heart. And I want to amplify a few things there this morning. Job chapter 14, and from verse 7. For there is hope of a tree if it be cut down that it will sprout again and that the tender branch thereof will not cease 
verse 8. Though the root thereof wax old in the earth, and the stock thereof die in the ground, verse 9. Yet, through the scent of water, it will bud and bring forth buffs like a plant. Verse 10. But man died and wasted away. Yea, man giveth up the ghost. And where is he? Amen. We are in our fruitful seasons. Can somebody say amen? In my few years of working with God, I've come to realize that God does not give something to a man with the intention of collecting it back later. I repeat. It is not in the habit. It is not in the character of God to give a man a gift with the intention of collecting it back. Now, the scripture says in Romans chapter 11 verse 29, Bible says that the gifts and the callings of God, they are what? Without repentance. And in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 14, the Bible says, whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. So God does not give you a gift and come back later wanting to collect it back. So shall I quickly declare to somebody here this morning that that which God has begun to do in your life shall be permanent. So let me declare to you that because it has pleased him to bless us, to give us, to usher us into this season that is called fruitful seasons, it shall not cease, it shall not end, it shall not dissipate. In other words, I am saying that our fruitful seasons have come to stay. Because God does not give something to a man with the intention of taking it back. Once you enter into an adventure with God, it is forever. Whatever God do it, it shall be forever. We used to sing a song. It shall be forever. Whatever God do it, it shall be forever. Whatever God do it, it shall be forever. Whatever God do it, it shall be forever. And forever and ever. Fruitful seasons is not just for 2021. Fruitful seasons is not just for 2022. Fruitful seasons is not just for a period. It is a season that has come to stay. It is a season that has come to swallow up every other season in your life. That is why it is called fruitful seasons. As one season is ending, and perhaps the devil is thinking of introducing another season, as he's thinking of doing that, as one fruitful season is ending, the next one is breaking. As that one is ending, the next one is breaking. It shall be a casket of fruitfulness. It shall be a retinue of fruitfulness because it is seasons. 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 You are in for a lifetime experience 
as far as this issue of fruitful seasons is concerned. You will see it in different shades and colors. You will see it in different dimensions. You will see it in different directions in the mighty name of Jesus. So when God gives a man a thing, he doesn't have the intention of collecting it back. Can somebody say amen to that? But I've seen men, but in scriptures and our contemporary days, come into such seasons with God. Even though as far as God is concerned, it is meant to be permanent. But I've seen men lose what God has given. Now listen, whatever a man receives, he can lose it. Are you with me this morning? Whatever a man receives, he can lose it. Whatever a man is given, he can lose it. As far as God is concerned, fruitful seasons are yours for life. But if you are not careful, you can lose it. So on that note this morning, I want to talk to us on sustaining your fruitful seasons. Sustaining your fruitful seasons. You need to sustain it. You need to sustain it. You need to keep it running. You need to keep it going. There are things you must do to make it an experience, a continuous and a consistent experience all the days of your life. And that is what we want to discuss this morning. There is a disposition that a man must possess if he must continue to enjoy fruitful seasons. There is a position, there is a standing that a man must take if he must continue to enjoy fruitful seasons. Because I bet you, God has released it. Amen? It is no longer with God. He has released it to you. It is now your responsibility to do what? To sustain it. He told Adam, after creating the Garden of Eden and everything in them, he formed man. And the Bible says, he placed him in the garden and he told him, tend it and keep it. I have given you everything that you need to succeed here. It is now your responsibility to tend it and to do what? And to keep it. So for whatever God does for a man, for whatever prophecy that hangs or that is released over the life of any child of God, that child of God has a responsibility of actualizing it. And he told Naaman, he said, go, dip yourself in the Jordan. How many times, please? Seven times. If Naaman has refused to do that, he would have remained leprous up till today. That is if he will still be alive up till today. Hallelujah. Sustaining your fruitful seasons. Very simple message. One point. I'm not a teacher, a, a teacher of the word. So I am very careful not to raise too many points that will get me confused. Many times I stick to one and try to drive it home. Hallelujah. Now, Job, where we read. You know, somebody like Pastor Tolu. Sometimes you won't understand the message until maybe like 10 minutes to the end. Because he will go here, he will go here, he will go here, he will just scatter, 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 scatter. And then, towards the end, he will now start gathering together. You know, say, ah, okay, so this is where this man, a me, I know the teacher. Hallelujah. And I won't try to be one. Because if I do that, you will not enjoy me. You won't. I've tried it. I, I, I like teaching as a person. I, 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 and honestly, even though it's not my ministry, but it's, I am asking the Lord to give it to me as a gift. I want to teach. Yes. Yes. I, I, I'm trusting God to help me to teach at some point. Hallelujah. 
So give us Job chapter 14 where we read again, please. As we begin to raise issues from there. Job chapter 14 from verse 7 where we read. For there is hope of a tree. If it be cut down, that it will sprout again. And that the tender branch thereof will not cease. Verse 8. Though the root thereof wax old, where please? Where please? Though the root thereof wax old, where? In the earth. Even though the root of the tree is growing old. Even though the root of the tree is dying. Even though the root of the tree is losing life. As long as that root is still here, please, in the earth. As long as that root is still connected to the ground. As long as that root has not yet been rooted out. As long as that root is still making contact with the earth. That is where the hope of sprouting again. That is where it comes from. You don't understand yet. What the Bible is saying is this. Let a tree be dying. Let a tree be withering. Let a tree be decaying. Let a tree be going through a season of dryness. But one thing is sure. As long as the root of that tree is still in the ground, what happens to it, please? It shall sprout again. There is hope for it. As long as the root is in the ground. Palata. Yeke paratayata. As long as the root of that tree is not cut down. As long as that tree is not disconnected from the earth. Even though the root is decaying beneath the ground. There is hope for it. As long as it remains connected to the earth as long as what the bible is saying is this for my child he may look withering on the surface he may look dry he may look weak he may look frail he may look as though there is no life inside of him or her it doesn't matter what matters is not the wind of dryness that blows what matters is not the wind of scarcity that blows. What matters is not the wind of death that blows. All those that don't matter to me. What matters is, is my son connected to the earth. Is my son connected to the ground. Does his root touch the earth? Does his root touch the ground? As long as his root is still connected beneath the earth there is hope for him there is hope for him there is hope for him can I ask you a question what are you going through what is that dead end that you appear to have entered what is that situation and circumstance that seems to be swallowing you up and there seems to be no hope anywhere the question is not that situation. Amen. The question, the matter, is not whatever the devil is throwing at you. The matter is your root. Is your root connected to the ground? No matter how dead a plant is, don't write it off as long as it is still connected to the ground. Jesus is the ground that every Christian must be planted. Jesus is the rock upon which your life must be connected. As long as you are connected, as long as you are still rooted, as long as you have not lost your root, no matter what the devil does to you, there is hope for you again. Because you shall sprout at the scent of water. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Can somebody shout hallelujah? Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah? 
There is hope for a tree that is still connected to the ground. There is hope for that tree. There is hope for a plant that has not been broken off. For a plant that has not been removed. If you like, cut the head. If you like, cut the stem. If you like, cut the leaves. If you like, even cut down the fruits. If you like, do whatever you want to do. As long as that tree is still connected to the ground, there is hope for it. There is hope for you. Bring it back for us, please. Job 14, verse 8. Though the root thereof wax old in the earth, and the stalk thereof die in the ground. Notice that the Bible uses what we call, I don't know what they call capital punishment. I think death is capital punishment in law, right? Is it only that? Okay. I think it also means that any punishment that has to do with maybe removal of any part of your body should, be, should also be capital. Right? But the Bible says, let me see, let me see that scripture again, brother. The Bible says, and the stock thereof die. It didn't say dying. It didn't say about to die. It says, even if the stock has died, even if it is dead already, even if there is no life in it, are you understanding me? Even if whatever is dead, there is no hope again. That is why we bury. When somebody dies, the reason why we bury is because there is no hope that the person will, will come back to life again. So the Bible is saying, that even if it has come to the end and there is nothing that can be done about that situation and circumstance again, as long as it is in the ground. Oh, can you shout hallelujah? As long as it is still in the ground. Though it is dead, as long as it is still in the ground. Give us verse 9. Yet, At the scent of water, what will happen to it? It will bud. You know what it means? As the root is decaying and as the stalk is dead in the ground, the only hope left for it is water. As it is dead there like this, it is still hoping, hoping, hoping that if there can just be an appearance of water, just a scent of it, scent, just a scent of it, just to smell it, not that the water will overwhelm it and it will sprout, no, just to smell water. Even if it is just a smell, even if it is just perceiving a small aroma of water. Just a scent of water. What will happen to it? It will bud. It will bud. It will bud. It will bud. Because it is connected to the ground. It will bud. Because it is still linked to the ground. It will bud. Because it is still connected to the source of life. Today, I challenge you. No matter what the devil has thrown at you, even if it appears as if you are dying, keep longing for the scent of water. Can somebody say hallelujah? The scent of water. And what is water in the scriptures? The word of God. The spirit of God. The word of God. The spirit of God. The Bible says in Ephesians, the Bible talks about the washing of water with the word. Water being compared to the word. In John chapter 7 verse 37, the Bible says, And Jesus standing up on the last day of a feast, he cried and he said, Whoever thirsts, let him come and do what? And drink. 
and whosoever believes in me out of his belly shall do what flow rivers of living waters and by that the bible says he was talking about what please the holy spirit so when the bible is talking about a descent of water there it is talking about a descent of the word of god it is talking about a descent of the holy ghost can i tell you this morning no matter how far the devil has gone in your life he takes just an appearance of the world he takes just an appearance of the holy ghost no matter how dead that situation is he takes just a smell of the holy ghost and you shall body again and you shall body again Shanda Rabaya, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. And you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses. So there is an ener energizing, there is an energizing that comes by the injection of the word of God, by the injection of the Holy Spirit. There is an energizing that comes. Are you dying? Seek that water, that water of the word. Are you dying? Seek that water. That water of the Holy Ghost. No matter what the devil has achieved in your life, it cannot stand the scent of water. It can't stand it. It can't stand it. At the scent of water, it shall board. At the scent of the word of God, it shall sprout again. At the scent of the Holy Spirit, it shall sprout again. And the angel came to Mary and prophesied unto her, You shall conceive and you shall give birth to a son and you shall call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins. And Mary said, Ah, how shall these things be? Seeing that I know no man. But you see, that was the first time God himself decided to be fruitful. You didn't hear what I just said. That was the first time God himself decided to be fruitful. What was the first fruit of God? Jesus. According to the book of Colossians, the Bible calls him the firstborn of all creation. So this fruitfulness we are talking about is not something that God has not experienced. It is something that God has passed through. He's only giving us opportunity to also be partakers of it. And he said, Mary, I want to be fruitful. Mary, I want to bring forth. Mary, I want to show my this generation a pattern. You shall bring forth a son. Even without a husband, you shall bring forth a son. What I want to do is not dependent on any man. What I want to do, you don't need any man to sleep with you. I want to. I want to impregnate you myself. A man attire. He break a lebayatania. And Mary said, How shall this thing be? What was the reply of the angel? He said, The spirit of the Lord will do what? Will come upon you. The scent of water. The scent of water. The scent of water. The spirit of the Lord will come upon you. The scent of water. All you need for freshness is the scent of water. All you need for newness is the scent of water. The Spirit of the Lord shall come upon you. And the power of the Most High shall overshadow you. When the Spirit comes, power comes. Power to rejuvenate. Power to reproduce. Power to become fruitful. I see the Holy Ghost coming upon somebody. Here this morning, in the name of Jesus, I see your life being overwhelmed by the Holy Ghost this morning, in the name of Jesus. Mary, I want to be fruitful. That was what God was telling her. I want to be fruitful. He has brought forth Jesus, who is the firstborn, the first fruit. Ah, the fruit after whom we all pattern after Jesus, the Lamb of God. Hey, and how shall this thing be? Man, Tarabayanda, in Brekelebe Sanata. You know, there was something that Mary did that pleased God so much. 
She said, I am thy handmaid. Be it unto me. Eh? You know it now. Recite it with me. Be it unto me. According to you know what Mary was saying? I read in the book of Job that at the scent of water, at the scent of thy word, it shall bud again. As long as it is your word, Lord, if it is according to your word, let it happen to me. In other words, your word is all that I care about. If it is your word, if it is according to what you have spoken, then I release myself as a handmaid. I submit completely to the authority of what? Of your word. Be it, it may not be normal, but as long as it is your word. It may not be popular. It may not be acceptable, but as long as as it is your word be it unto me according to your word this morning you want to sustain your fruitful seasons all you need to do is to remain connected to what please to the word of god somebody say the word of god come on come on i want you to shout it five times so that it can enter you want to go the word of god the word of god the word of god the word of God. The word of God. The only way that your fruitful seasons will last is your consistent, dogged, continuous, unceasing connection to the word of God. That is where life is. You know, the Bible says, my son, Proverbs chapter 4 verse 20, my son, Give attention to my word. Amen? Incline your ears. Now, the Bible says incline. That word incline means there should be some effort. You need to tune. You need to tune. Normally your ears will not want to be tuned to the word of God. So incline it, turn it. Just as you tune your radio. Say, tune your ears. Incline your ears. You incline it. Incline your ears to my saying. You know, he says, do not let them depart from where? Your eyes. He didn't say your heart. Too. He said your eyes. It means that that word, let, talks about allow. Do not allow them. So it means that if you are not careful, the word of God that you have received can can go away it can fly away so the bible says now you now have to be deliberate okay apart from inclining your ears you must be deliberate about keeping them where in the midst of your eyes you must if possible carry the whole bible insert it into your eyes let your eyes be on the word of god in the morning in the noon time in the night let your, the, the word of God be, be close to your eyes. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Then the Bible now says, after inclining your ears, after keeping them in the midst of your eyes, the Bible now says, keep them where, please? Where, please? In the midst of your heart. You know what the Bible is saying there? You must hear God's word. You must see God's word. You must read it. And then you must do what? You must transport it into your heart. And you know the Bible says, I found your word. And I did what? I did eat them. The word of God is edible. Like Simon, you know the way you munch your yam? You masculate it. The word of God, you can, you can masculate it. You can you can chew it. See, the word is not yet relevant to you until you have eaten it. 
until you have eaten it. You may know all the quotes, all the quotable quotes. You see, the Bible says, it is the entrance, he said the entrance of his word. Does what? It giveth light. The entrance, the entrance, the entrance, the entrance. That is the key word, the entrance. So, it is the word that has entered that can give you light. As long as the word has not yet entered, no matter how you quote it, you are quoting in darkness. Oh yes. It's as serious as that. And it is warfare. It is warfare. To, to digest God's word is, is warfare. You see? In Revelation chapter 5, I'm digressing a bit. My time is even gone, Seth. In Revelation chapter 5, there was a book that needed to be opened. And there was none found to open it. And John that was seeing the revelation, he said, and I wept so, because there was none found worthy. It's not as if there was none. There, was, there were people. But nobody was found worthy to open it. And as he cried, an angel appeared to him, right? And said unto him, weep not, for one has been found to open the book. He said, the, is it the lion of the tribe of Judah now? Has done what? Has done what? Prevailed. Yes. The Bible says the lion of the tribe of Judah has done what? Has prevailed. Now, that word prevail indicates that there was battle. You cannot use the word prevail where there was no conquest. So, for Jesus to prevail to open it, it means there was a level of battle that he was engaged in. Little wonder, your Bible is not attractive to you. Whenever your Bible is not attractive to you, that is, that is a battle that you must conquer so that you can open it. You don't understand. Listen, it is enough stretch to the devil for you to just be able to open the Bible. You have not even read it yet. Because Revelation says, for the Lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed to do what? To open it. Just to open. No? Just to open. You have not read it. You have not digested it. Just to open the word of God is enough threat to the kingdom of the, the, the devil. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Your sustenance of your fruitful season is connected to how connected you are to the word of God. As long as the root is connected to the ground, as long as the root is still located within the earth, as long as the root has not been broken off the ground, there is hope for it because it shall sprout again. And Jesus said, I am the vine, ye are the branches. John chapter 15 from verse 1. Whosoever, is, whosoever abideth in me, what happens please? Beareth much fruit. Whosoever abide in me. If, I, if, you, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, then shall ye be my disciples indeed. Now listen, listen. There is nothing you can do. There can never be any actualization of fruitful seasons in your life outside Christ. And I'm not saying you are not born again. Those decisions you are taking outside Christ that will lead you to dryness outside Christ. For Jesus said, for without me, ye can do. You can do. But all that you can do, if we add it together, is equal to what? Nothing. Take note of the language of the Bible. For without me, you can do a lot of people are doing without Jesus. Yes, of course. People are making money without Jesus. Our politicians are making money without the instructions of Jesus. People are living their lives without Jesus. That is why they can fornicate. That is why they can kidnap. That is why they can kill. That is why you can commit malice. That is why you can, live your, you can choose to marry whoever you want to marry. People are living without Jesus. Am I correct? People are living 
without Jesus. So Jesus said, without me you can do. But all that you can do, at the end of the day, if we add them together, is equal to what? Nothing. Whatever you achieve, and you are not rooted in Jesus, at the end of the day, when Max shall be apportioned, your own shall be capital zero. You would have amounted to nothing without Jesus. The only way you can sustain fruitful season is by remaining connected to who, please? To Jesus. The only way, no matter what the devil throws at you, and it's as if life is ebbing out of you, the only way for a revival is when you are connected to who, please? To Jesus. And Acts chapter 14, where we took that theme from, the Bible talks about, first of all, when the apostles were saying, and God has not left himself without a witness. If you notice, the Bible says, and he giveth us rain. And what? And then fruitful what? Season. So it is rain before fruitful season. It is water before fruitful season. I cannot tell you lies. We cannot prophesy over your life. And you expect to enjoy the reality of it when you are not living your life for Jesus. Beginning from today, do you want to enter into the reality of these fruitful seasons that we are talking about? Then begin to live for Jesus. Let us make man in our image. And when he made them, the Bible says, and God blessed them. And then he pronounced unto them, be fruitful, multiply. It was after God has created them in his image. The first thing that must happen is that you must be formed, you must arrive, you must be modeled after the image of his dear son. It is when you are formed, when you are modeled after his image that you become a fruitful boy. Finally, Genesis 49, where we have our word for the month. Genesis 49. As we conclude, Genesis 49 from verse 22. And Arabashandarabaya. I'll be a true soldier. I'll die at my post. Joseph is what, please? Can we read it together? Joseph is what? I cannot hear you. Joseph is what? Even what? A fruitful both. We are. We are. What do you have inside the well? Isaiah chapter 12, what does it say? Ye shall draw water out of where, please? The well of salvation. So when you read, and Joseph is a fruitful bulb, a fruitful bulb beside the well, whose branches goes over the wall. There is a secret there. The secret there is that Joseph is planted by the well. Joseph is planted beside the water. The water of the world. The water of the Holy Ghost. See, it is an irresistible force when a man is planted by the world. It's an irresistible force. Blessed is that man that seated not in the council of their godly, nor stand in the way of sinners. No, what's the third one? Yes. Walk, stand, sit. The Bible now says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And his Lord doth he meditate. Hear how? Day and night. Verse 3. He says, and he shall be like a tree. That is what? That is what, please? Planted. Planted by the rivers of water. Be a planted Christian. Be so planted that you are immovable. Be so planted that no, no gimmicks can, can confuse you. All those messages that we see on social media. About some weeks ago, I was listening to a popular servant of God who was arguing... That baptism, water baptism, is wrong. I 
And I was wondering, where is this man coming from? And the reason why he was saying it's wrong is that John the Baptist that did the first baptism, who baptized him? So he now said that it means that even John the Baptist did not believe in the baptism that he was baptizing people. And, I, and then I now ask, it's just like saying, Jesus did not believe in his death because who died for him? Who died for him? Who died for Jesus? So if you are saying John the Baptist did not believe in baptism because nobody baptized him, it means you are automatically saying Jesus did not believe in his death and we should discountenance the death of Jesus because nobody died for him. See, eh? While he was preaching, while he was preaching, people were clapping. It was Rema. Yes. It was Rema. But you see, that is what being planted by the word of God does to you. Nobody can confuse you because you are planted. When something is planted, it is stationary. It's immovable. So let your life be planted by the well of the river of the water of the word of God. Even the devil knows that once you are planted in the word, he knows that his days are numbered. He knows that no matter the onslaught he launches against you, he knows he cannot prevail. Why? Because you are planted. Rise on your feet, somebody. Rise on your feet. Sustaining the fruitful seasons. The only point I've made today, you must be planted in the word of God. You must be planted in the Holy Spirit. That's the only point I've made today. Lord Jesus, plant my feet right in your word. Can you just pray? Can I have the choir sing, order my steps in your word, oh Lord, order my steps. As we pray together, I want to borrow five minutes from pastor just for us to pray. Five minutes, Lord. Lord, I want to be planted in your word. Lord, I want to be located in your word. All the days of my life, order my steps. Order my steps in your word, something like that. I want to be planted. I want to be planted. Plant me in your word. Open your mouth and pray. Don't look at anybody now. I want to be planted in your word. Yes. Alam baradai. Libre kuria dasada. Open my heart to your word. Help me to be planted inside of your word. Help me to be planted in your word. Araba shanda raba. Come on, sing it, sing it, sing it, sing it. Let's sing it together. All of my steps in your world is Lord. Lead me, guide me every day. Send your anointing, Father, I pray. Sing it two more times. Order my steps in your word, Lord. Oh, lead me, guide me every day. Send your anointing, Father, I pray. For the last time now, order my steps in your word. Order my steps in your word, yeah, Lord. Lead me, guide me every day. Send your anointing, Father, I pray.
never break where you decide not to live by the word of God may that day not break for his word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path may that day not break Lord, Lord, that day that day that I will choose not to live by your word may that day not break I don't have time but like, like, like Mary like Mary, just pray this simple prayer like Mary be it unto me according to your word. Just pray. Be it unto me according to your word. Be it unto me, Lord Jesus, according to your word. Be it unto me according to your word. In the mighty name of Jesus. 